Naked Science is on an imaginary interstellar journey, a trip taking hundreds of years. We've set our sights on a new home in a distant solar system. Overcoming all the obstacles will test our ingenuity to the limit. But brace yourselves. We are about to encounter the most deadly enemy of them all, radiation. Back home, we enjoy the sun's light and warmth. But every so often, the sun seems to get angry. Solar flares fling billions of tons of deadly radiation into space. The Earth's magnetic field protects us from this lethal shower. But caught outside our ship, when a flare strikes, an astronaut will be dead in 10 hours. Relax though, flares don't happen that often, and NASA officials are confident they can warn us of this impending danger. But there's something far more insidious out there. Deep space radiation. Invisible rays spewing out from distant stars, hurtling through space, peppering anything in their path like machine gun fire. Now, imagine closing your eyes and seeing these cosmic rays passing through your body. That's exactly what happened to the Apollo 11 astronauts in 1969. Gazing out of their space capsule, they witness amazing sights. The breathtaking view of Earth receding into space. The far side of the moon. And strange flashes of light inside their eyeballs. Back on Earth, the crew report these light flashes to mission control. NASA immediately contacts physicist Lawrence Pinsky to investigate. In some cases, they reported them as looking like lightning in the clouds. In other cases, they looked like stars or spots. In some cases, streaks. Once the story breaks, other astronauts follow suit and admit to seeing them too. The astronauts were reluctant to report anything that they felt that might remove them from flight status and, and being up there and seeing flashes of light, nobody else was reporting them, so you didn't want to be the first one to say, hey, I see spots before my eyes. Pinsky suspects the flashes could be harmful, but it's not until the Apollo 16 mission, three years later, that he's able to rig up a test. He has the astronauts cover their eyes and report the light flashes. Pinsky discovers that it's not light hitting their eyes, it's cosmic radiation. Each ray striking the astronaut's retina fools the brain into thinking it's light. The radiation seems to have no immediate effect. But NASA later find a staggering one in six former astronauts they studied suffers from cataracts, higher than the earthbound average. They face a clouding of the eye and eventual blindness. So the cosmic radiation is doing damage. And as we go farther and farther into space, we are at risk not just for cataracts, but possibly for cancer. So if the radiation is passing through our eyes, what is it doing to our brains? Back on Earth, at the National Laboratory in Brookhaven, New York, Marcelo Vasquez is trying to find out. He reproduces cosmic radiation to gauge its impact on our brain cells. We are concerned that cosmic rays will produce brain damage. Vasquez is working against the clock. He's got till 2010 to solve the problem, or NASA will ground all manned long distance space flights. We don't want to have astronauts that reach their target and they are not able to land or, or operate or to function and remember or, or perform. Vasquez is using live stem cells, but they're fragile, so every second counts. The cells cannot be more than 10 minutes outside the incubator, basically. 
Identification is completed. Brookhaven's heavy ion beam is the only one dedicated to this research in the United States. Cosmic radiation travels at over 160,000 miles per second. That's almost the speed of light. Vasquez shoots the beam through the cells. It's coming up, 59, 79, 99. Dose delivered. Well, look at this. This cosmic ray is like a bullet going through the nuclear of the cells, producing DNA damage. So we can see, actually, the effect of cosmic ray when they damage the DNA. This is fantastic. And the first indication is that cosmic ray can kill brain cells and culture. And it's very worrisome, actually. If a single blast kills brain cells, we'll need some serious protection on our ship. The shielding material has to be light. So Vasquez tests a sample of polyethylene plastic to see if it blocks the cosmic rays. The shielding proves partially successful, but many of the radiation bullets are still getting through and wreaking havoc on the cells. 